This new study published in JAMA Network Open has found a long-term link between Hurricane Sandy flooding and heart disease risk in older adults affected by the storm. Joining me to talk about this is Dr. Arnab Ghosh, Assistant Professor of Medicine at Wild Cornell Medicine and lead author of the study, and AccuWeather Chief Meteorologist Jonathan Porter. Thanks for joining us, all of you, this afternoon. Thanks for having us. All right, Dr. Ghosh, we're going to start with you. What mm -hmm. led you to look at the long-term health impacts of Hurricane Sandy? Well, interestingly, I was a resident at Bellevue and NYU when Hurricane Sandy hit. So I was there when uh, the hurricane flood affected our hospital. I was there chain ganging gasoline up to the 13th floor. And I was there also carrying patients downstairs when the power went out. And after the event, what I became interested in is studying what happened to my patients who were affected by the hurricane. We were seeing issues, for example, where people's blood pressure wasn't well controlled. They didn't have enough medication for their to manage their diabetes. They lost power so they couldn't keep their insulin in their fridge anymore. And I think what speaks to this is not controlling your medical, issue, your, your medical conditions in the short term will have long-term implications. Mm. And I think that's what our findings suggest. Mm. And what were your most striking findings, especially in New Jersey residents? Yeah, what we found was that the risk of developing heart attacks or strokes or heart failure in the aftermath of the hurricane was elevated uh, significantly up to five years after the event. So if you were, lived in a zip code that was flooded, you had about a one in 20 chance of developing one of those conditions up to five years after the, after the hurricane. And John, what is your reaction to Dr. Ghosh's findings? Yeah, this is very important research, and we're not surprised to see this at all because AccuWeather has been talking about for decades that uh, the impacts in the wake of natural disasters, especially major natural disasters, are greater than what is often reported, and that's in terms of the uh, health impacts, physical and mental health, that's in terms of the economic uh, impact in particular areas. There was a study last year um, in Nature Magazine, for example, that uh, showcased that average, on average, hurricanes produce seven to 10,000 excess deaths in the 10 years after the storm. So the study findings here are very important, once again, to highlight the fact that these impacts often last many, many years beyond the immediate damage, and there are things that you can't see at first. And, and Dr. Ghosh, you just heard what, what John said. Based on your study, does that surprise you about the other impacts that John just mentioned that occur after hurricanes hit? No, no, not at all. Um, we, we, were, we always worry about the risk of, fr frankly, dying in the aftermath and how that extends into the longer term. And we think about why that happens. You think about the flood risk. You think about affecting your home, dealing with the insurance and the stress associated with that. Uh, we think about relocating. And so this is not a surprise. We link this to heart disease because we think that stress is particularly important and that heart stressful situations actually make it more likely to have heart disease. And John, what patterns do you see in the long-term aftermath of this and major hurricanes? So Dr. Ghosh is talking about that stress that's surviving such a major event like Hurricane Sandy or Hurricane Katrina or the LA wildfires, just as, as a few examples, that the stress that people go through, as you know, AccuWeather's uh, recognized experts on developing the total damage and economic loss. And in some cases, our estimates are multiple times the numbers that other sources are providing because we consider the most holistic set of potential impacts, including the long tail of medical impacts and long tail of economic impacts. The other thing I think is very interesting about Dr. Ghosh's study is that it reaffirms another point that we've stressed too, mm -hmm. which is that people who are, have under other medical conditions, uh, for example, dementia or Alzheimer's or perhaps diabetes, they're the ones that can be at especially high risk of having compounded medical impacts going forward. And Dr. Ghosh, you just heard John's explanation about moving forward. What should hospitals 
and public health officials do differently after future hurricanes to reduce these long-term health impacts? I think just reflecting on what John said, uh, as, and as a physician, I think about are we are these hurricanes and events really new risk factors for medical problems coming out of extreme weather? And if so, should we be looking after these patients differently? Should we be thinking about moving at them out of harm's way? And so I think these considerations will, will become more prominent, particularly as these extreme weather events like hurricanes and wildfires and flash flooding happen more frequently. And John, how can studies like this help forecasters, policymakers, and communities prepare not just for the storm itself, but for the years that follow the storm? But I think this is a very important conversation because as a, as, a, as a country, we need to be thinking about not only just the short term impacts, but that long tail of impacts. And we know with climate changing, with our climate changing, mm. our atmosphere warming, that severe weather impacts are occurring more frequently and with greater magnitude all over the world. And the response to natural disasters then is going to become even more important as well. Dr. Arnab Ghosh and AccuWeather Chief Meteorologist Jonathan Porter, I thank both of you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you.